Right, uh, you didn't put me the, the starting. Welcome to the... Okay, you know what? I'm going to improvise. Okay. Let me know when. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Social Lady Show. This is Tal Navarro, and we're going to talk today about business, life, and everything in between. I have a special guest today. Emily is in the house. Emily, how are you, my dear? Good. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, of course. So, so Emily, she's the founder and the CEO of North America's top event staffing agency. She's also a businesswoman, a serial entrepreneur. She has an amazing podcast named Mind Your Business, and she's all over the place in Clubhouse and in so many places. Don't miss out also her Instagram page, lovely and super educating. And we're going to talk about all this today. So before we get started, you know, about anything, I, wanted, I want you to share a little bit about yourself. Like, what exactly that you do? Are you doing so many things, girl? I mean, I want to hear about them, and, and I'm sure everyone mm-hmm. wants to. So tell us a little bit about Absolutely. each and every one of those things that you do. So back in 2008, I was you working. When you were 12. <laughs> I was working a retail job, and I really hated it. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was kind of lost. I was in my early 20s, and my sister Julia gave me a book called Career Renegade, and it was all about how to make a great living doing what you love. And it just sparked this idea in me. It, it, it totally changed the way I thought. And at the time, I had a part-time job where I worked as a promotional model. And I thought, I'm going to start a promotional agency. So I went and I talked to a friend who owned a restaurant. And I said, you know, this is my idea. I want to start a business. And he said, don't do it. It'll never go anywhere. It won't be successful. There's too much competition in that industry. Don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think so, buddy. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> so God. So I launched my first company, uh, Benfitel Media, and we started with staffing promotional models and brand ambassadors for small local venues. So it was really any booking I could get. And then as I grew, I expanded the services, I expanded the reach and the offerings. And now we have over 10,000 staff that work for us, but we staff everything from product launch to fashion shows, to music videos, you know, some of our clients are Justin Bieber, Jennifer Lopez, Dior, Louis Vuitton, uh, Toronto Film Festival, all di- different kinds of awesome things. Uh, we also have an experiential marketing division. So we will plan and launch entire marketing campaigns for our clients. We also have a communications division. So we will do the public relations side for them as well. And then in about 2013, I launched Lions Elite, which is a luxury matchmaking agency. So we work with a lot of very big CEOs, politicians, professional athletes, all kinds of very busy people that are looking for love, but they don't really have the time to put into finding the right person. So that is an absolutely phenomenal experience because you're really finding somebody, their life partner. And I mean, there's nothing that compares to it. And then I also have True Glue Beauty, which is a clean beauty company. We launched that in 2014. And uh, I have a nonprofit called the Julia Lyons Foundation, which was inspired by my sister, Julia, who passed away from cystic fibrosis. And yeah, those are my main companies and my main ventures. So first of all, wow, super impressive (laughs) for a 25 years old lady, you know, it's amazing. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm so grateful and honored to have you here sharing all this. Um, So tell me as a matchmaker, okay, I'm going to go to one of them and I'm going to talk about the matchmaking part. People who are, you know, feeling lonely those days, you know, with quarantining and everything that's going on in the, in the planet Mm. these days, is it, what is the best place on digital, on online to find love? Do you think that, is it easier or harder to find love on the, the social media apps or, or, or it's not? I mean, you, you're the expert, so. What? Right now is a fantastic time to find love because so many people are working virtually. So they're spending a lot more time online. They are focusing a lot more on finding somebody because it's changed all of our mindset right now, right? And it's putting us back into what's important. And for a lot of people, that's finding a partner. It's also 
opened up people's schedules because they're not going to meetings, they're not going to parties, they're not going to events. So they have a lot more time to focus on that. Finding someone online, I would never say one app, one thing over the other because never put your all your eggs in one basket. Try everything. Reach out to someone on social media if you see them. Strike up a conversation. Go on Clubhouse. You know, sign up for the dating apps. Put right. yourself out there. You'll right. never know unless you try. Also, you can get on a lot of matchmakers' databases. Just join their free database, and you never know who might be a client of theirs. Yeah, that's that's great great advice for whoever is looking for love out there. Um, how mm -hmm. did you start your business? Like, what was the first? Which first of all, you know, you know, as an entrepreneur, I know we always have ideas and new things we want to achieve. You know, I've been doing gazillion things. Uh, at once, and I know the feeling, you know, of, you know, how do you stay mm -hmm. not overwhelmed with um, not jumping into every idea? How do you know which one is going to work or not going to work? I'm talking for, you know, I'm, I'm talking on behalf of all the entrepreneurs out there that are really curious. How did you manage to uh, succeed with so many, so many different assets, so many, so many different companies? How, so how, do, you, like, how always, do you find? Yeah, go ahead. I always like to, to uh, test the market in some way and see the reaction because they will tell you, you might have the best idea ever, but the market might not be ready for it. Um, so I like to really, when I'm starting a new idea, keep my overhead as low as possible until I see money come back. And then I invest that back into the company to scale it. But um, I mean, with my first company, I didn't spend money for years after making it. I mean, I worked from home for as long as I possibly could before I got an office space. I didn't hire my first employee until three or four years in uh, because I wanted to ensure that it was going to be able to continue on its own and I didn't want to put out all that money. But I think that's what's really important is to test your market, see what works, keep your overhead low. That's always been something that I have lived by. I don't splash out on big fancy things that we don't need. I mean support your staff, support you, I think are the most important things to put your money back into. But yeah, I would really say test your market if you're trying something new. Amazing. And uh, I know that you are keeping, you know, the, your online presence uh, super duper uh, great. And um, how, do you, how do you get to keep all that going? I know that you're in Clubhouse a lot, you know, time management, I mean, um, you know, how do you keep, uh, you know, and also you need to learn and you involve and grow, you know, with your role and with your uh, your companies. And on the same time, you have to be present on Instagram and do the reels <laughs> and do the, the show, you know, and be on Clubhouse and talk everywhere and appear on every stage. How do you manage to do all that? Are you multiple yourself or are you like they're cloning yourself or how? what's the secret? I think multitasking is really important. So I go for a walk every day and while I'm on my walk, I'll do Clubhouse or I'll update my social medias. But really time blocking. So I'm like a dog when it sees a squirrel. So I'll be doing something and then I'm just like, ah, squirrel, onto another task and forgetting <laughs> what I'm doing. And then the next thing I know, I'm doing a million things at once. My tabs, I've got 50,000 of them open on my computer. So every day I get out a productivity planner and I write down my most important tasks for the day. And then I do those first. So they're out of the way, they're done. I know that they're taken care of. And then the rest of the day, I have other things I want to get done. But if they don't get done, it's not the end of the world. So, I mean, that might be social media that day. That might be getting on Clubhouse. But really, I've gotten those most important things done. And I think that a, a lot of the tasks that we have to do just get dragged out. They get dragged out because we get distracted or, you know, we've had this pulling at us, that pulling at us. And we're doing so many things that we don't finish a task and just close that off. So I think it's really important to just, for undistracted, for the first few hours of the day, eat the frog, get the worst ones that you, <laughs> you keep pushing off, done, out of the way. And that's how I really do it. So you work a lot with a calendar, you blocking time. I work a lot with time blocking, putting my phone on, um, on airplane mode. But you know, your brain works best in 90 minute intervals. So if you have a task you set, I'll set my timer for 90 minutes and I shut everything off so that nobody can bother me. And then, I'll do that task, I'll take a break, and then I'll go on, and then I'll start the next one, or I'll finish it if it's not done. But either way, I'll take a break so that my mind's fresh, that I'm still attacking it, and it's not getting dragged out. Because you want to use the time that you are using efficiently and effectively. You don't want to be doing anything half. Where do you find that? So. I don't know. I'm telling you. I don't, 
I'm like, I'm blocking time, but it's still the, the, there's always what to do in that blocked time, you know, <laughs> and I have a baby too. So it's like on top of all of, of everything, <laughs> but a great, that's, that's a good, super important, you know, that you put your phone on air mode. And I think it's a good advice for everyone out there, you know, that want to manage their time. Sometimes you need to really give a break to the phone, especially when you sit mm -hmm. hours and hours in front of a computer which like I do, and I guess a lot of people do, especially in this COVID. And I'm, I've been doing it for all my life, so I can totally relate to that. Um, did you know, like, did, I wanted to ask something else. You know, I can see you as a young little girl, you know, um, and because uh, you, you, you're still at that age, you know, not all like me, but you... <laughs> but But um, so where did, did you feel like, and your entrepreneurship since you were very little is it something that you gained with time or when did you start to feel that you are you know uh what did you want to do when you were young really young i mean really small girl you know, you know or what? entrepreneurship was never something that i had ever thought of as a child i thought it was something reserved for like the rich and the famous or somebody who came from a wealthy family or their parents were business owners it never once crossed my mind and if it had I wouldn't have thought that I would be capable of that you know I I didn't think that I was really that I didn't have any belief in myself I think but um when I was a kid I wanted to be everything under the sun it seemed to change every year from a vet to a dental hygienist to this to that and I really had every job under the sun I mean I went to Australia to be a nanny I was a cleaner I worked on a farm <laughs> like I've done everything in between so it, it, and it's it's turned out great because now as a business owner you have to wear so many hats so I mean it was it was training back then <laughs> amazing amazing you know every experience you connect the dots you take all the experience and you create you know created a little empire from it this is beautiful mm -hmm. I'm so happy to hear mm -hmm. that um and what are your hobbies do you like to what do you like to do in your free time right yes, my free time. <laughs> uh, i like to spend time with my partner ryan um i like to cook you like read. to read you know what yeah i like to cook i love you it know what? I, I have a love for cheesy romance novels <laughs> Ooh, like i, I don't it. know i i somehow got read one a few years ago and i was just hooked so uh -huh. if I have time, I will dive into a romance novel like Me Before You or The Notebook. The Notebook. Like oh, I used to love this book so much. And I saw the movie as well. So, oh, so uh, you know that I dedicated to one of my ex this The Notebook. I told him one day we're going to meet. <laughs> you know, one day we, get, we have to split now. But one day we're going to meet. I'm sure I feel it. Never happened. <laughs> Thank goodness. <Yeah. laughs> That's amazing, amazing. Well, you should definitely come to, I don't cook at all. I, I'm married to a private oh, chef. So oh I, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm very bad. I don't, that. Yeah, I, I boil, I, I, I burn an egg, you know, I just, even the salad tastes like sand when I make it. Seriously, I'm not that good, but, but I'm over, I'm exaggerating, but I'm, I'm very happy that you find, you know, to cook, cooking, it's, it's very relaxing for, for him, at least. I know that I see him doing mm -hmm. it and it's, um, so tell me if I'm an entrepreneur and I am an entrepreneur, but for a starting entrepreneur, what do you think, um, should be the first steps for him before he starts anything? How should he really, you know, you know um, think of what is the, exactly the best thing to do or what is the advice you have for someone who starts his business, you know, small business or a small mm -hmm. startup? What do you think are the first steps that he needs to be done before he's uh, jumping in the water and starts to swim or trying to swim? What I like to do is really have an idea of where I want to go. So have a vision, you know, I take a piece of paper and I did this from the very beginning and I would just, wave if i could wave a magic wand where would i want to see this business go where would i want to see it take me and then business i think like life is just problem solving now you just figure out how you're going to get there and i remember when i first started my company and i was doing this and i thought i will be happy if i just make thirty-five thousand a year <laughs> and i thought then i'll be content you know i could get by live in my little basement apartment 
And then and stay there know, forever. Then it, <laughs> and then it was like, I'll be happy if I can make six figures. And then it was, I'll be happy if I can make seven figures. And it just kind of goes and goes and goes until your purpose becomes something else deeper than, than monetary. But mm-hmm. I would think at the beginning, definitely have an idea of where you want to go. And eventually knowing your purpose, why do you want to go there? Because that was something else. I mean, as I hit these, hit the figures and hit the goals, it was like, okay, well, why am I doing this? And then I started to learn, well, my purpose is to give back and it's to really help people and to help my family and help younger entrepreneurs that want to come up and support people through my nonprofit. And so that was a whole other purpose. And that was able to also help me level up to a whole other level because on those tough days, when I didn't want to work really hard, long hours, that was like, okay, no, I have a purpose bigger than me. Mm. So those are things, some things I would say is find your purpose and know where you're going. I love it. This is so true. And it's, it's, it's so inspiring. You know, a lot of people listening to us, they're really starting their, you know, their journey, but not everyone does what he loves. And that's really to find a purpose. It's so important. And I totally agree with you. This is a, a very good point. How did, by the way, the COVID now, you know, how, how did it affect you? Did it affect anything on your business? Do you feel like, did you feel, do you feel like it's a, it affected entrepreneurship in general, people who want to start their small businesses or, Or is it something that, is it good or bad for business? What do you think about it? I think it really depends on what industry you're in. Uh, I'm really glad that I've diversified and I have more than one company because my events agency, obviously, that got shut down. So within a matter of 48 hours, we had hundreds of events canceled. We had to lay off our whole office staff for that and close down one of the offices. So luckily, I was able to offer a lot of the employees the option if they wanted to go to another business. Uh, how I see things with adversities is really an opportunity, an opportunity for us to look at things from a different lens. So how could I do things differently? You know, now that I have this, again, problem solving. So what I did is I went back and I found ways to pivot the company. So we introduced safety staffing. So now for corporations, we'll provide staff that will uphold, you know, physical distancing, they'll do the, all the different safety procedures. But really, another thing was, is I could really focus on other things that I have been putting off. So I was able to finish my book, I was able to, to do all kinds of other things that I really wanted to do, but just couldn't. And that made me so ecstatic, because it was, it was so refreshing. And I saw how burnt out I was with the events company and so caught up into it. But I think that's a really beautiful thing about entrepreneurs is that they are able to think differently. And so when these things come up, we are able to pivot or to see different op- options or opportunities that we can go with or take our companies. And so that's the beautiful thing about it. If there is a beautiful thing about COVID is that it's given us the opportunity to, to see things differently and come up with new ideas. And, and so that's what I've done. Absolutely. Absolutely. So true. And this is great that you took it and you made gold from it, you know, and it's great. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Wanted to ask you one more thing before we wrap up. Um, If you were, first of all, before I'm asking you this question, I want to hear more about your podcast. I know you have uh, an amazing podcast that you are, uh, tell you tell me a little bit more about it so people can, and, and also where we can find it so people can come and hear it absolutely it's on itunes it's on spotify it's, it's on anywhere where you can stream a podcast with your name uh, right just with google my it. name yep. with your name it's okay. mind your business with Perfect. emily lyons mm-hmm. so i talk to a variety of different inspiring people so i really think that all inspiring people are inspired people you know a lot of us have overcome all kinds of adversities to get to where we are you know, people see the end product, but they don't see the journey there. They don't see the struggle. People see someone and they think overnight success, but that is never the case. There's usually years and years and years of trial and error and failure to get to where they are. So I really share a lot of those stories and just a, just a whole variety of people that I just genuinely find inspiring and interesting and how they can help other people get to where they want to go or improve in a number of different ways. And I really love doing it. It's, it, it was a, a passion project and I wasn't really sure, you know, I thought maybe I shouldn't start a podcast. So many people have it. It's so popular. 
who am I to do it? And then I thought, now who am I not to? Like right. you, you like it, so just do it. And then after we launched, we were trending on the top charts of iTunes. Amazing. I, like, I don't want to do this. You know, and that's, I thought it was just a testament is because it doesn't matter how many people have done what you've done. You can do it differently because it's you. We all have something unique to bring to the table, all a unique perspective and voice. So it doesn't matter if there's a billion podcasts, you do it as you. And so I love it. I love that. I love it so much. I mean, I I can totally (laughs) resonate with you. I, I took a long time before I started my podcast and I'm like a late bloomer when I said, cause I said the same thing, you know, who's going to listen to it, you know, and who's going to, you know, who, there's so many out there. What am I going to bring you to the table? But every episode is something new because it's me in the episode. And also my conversation with the other person is, is different mm-hmm. than any conversation he will have with someone else. So I love that point that you just brought up. And um, where, where can, we, can we find it on your uh, Instagram as well? Or the, is it like... You can you find it on some... my Instagram, on my website. It links to it. Okay, perfect. Also, another question for you. As a beautiful, strong entrepreneur woman, you know, in this world, it's, it's not always, always simple to be, you know, a, a, a strong woman, you know, in this uh, male-dominating world. Um, do you feel that um, th- there was a change in the last few years? Do you do, how how do you approach to all that the fact that you are uh, a real strong and dominating and alpha woman that make her own money? Um, what is the one tip or one approach that you you can bring to any of our listeners out there? Because I know a lot of women are looking up to you and they would say, "Oh, I want to have the same. How do you even start? You know, um, maybe I'm not that good. Maybe I'm I am that good." What do you think about it? What do you want to say something to all these women that are looking up to you now? I've absolutely found a shift in the last few years. When I first started, it was a lot harder to be taken seriously. We lost out to so many bids that, that we, were, we were fighting to win because it was a male-owned company. And a lot of the males that worked with the potential clients were friends. They would go golfing together. There was this brotherhood and just in all the different things I found it very hard I mean this is going back 11 years to be taken seriously as a woman in business but as it's become more common it's become a lot easier to be respected as a woman in business and something that I say to young entrepreneurs is to find a way to use that as a positive so we as women can see things from a different angle we can do things differently that a man wouldn't do. So when I was entering into a male dominated world, I was also entering as a very young woman. So I was in my early twenties and a lot of these people that were running these companies were 40, 50, 60 years old and they had been in it forever. And so I remember walking into this huge uh, bank. It was this huge office and I was going in to bid on this huge, massive campaign. And the guy turned and he looked at me and he goes, you're the owner. And at that point I wanted to die because he wasn't expecting me to be a young female. And I thought, oh my God. But then I I left and I thought, who am I to be doing this? Like, who am I to be thinking that I, I could do this? And then again, I thought, no, you belong here. And not only that, you can do things differently. So I thought, okay, as a young person, how could I do this that the people that have been doing it for so long haven't been? So I looked at that. And back then in 2009, I noticed that these corporations that we were up against weren't utilizing social media. So I put so much energy into social media and I built a huge following for the businesses. So now what I would do is I would go to the companies when we were bidding on their projects. And I would say, not only will you get, you know, amazing staff and marketing services and blah, blah, blah. We'll also promote you on our social media networks that totals hundreds of thousands of followers. We will promote your ticket sales. We'll increase your audience. We'll increase your exposure. We'll drive it back to follow you on social media. You know, we'll link it to you so that you get that search engine optimization juice. And these were things that differentiated us and now gave us that, that extra tick that had businesses now giving us their bookings. And it was just the small thing, but that the older people weren't doing because they'd been doing what they'd been doing for so long was how it was. They didn't need to change. So I would always say to a woman, think of how you can do things differently from a female standpoint, 
or as a young person, how you can do things differently. No matter what it might be, use it to your benefit. But um, as a woman in business, it's the best time than has ever been to become an entrepreneur. We have everything going for us. And I think there's so much support out there and you should absolutely go for it if you're thinking about it. Oh, my love, Emily, I have a girl's crush on you. You're so gorgeous. <laughs> this is, it's, it's so true, you know, just, you know, women have to really believe in themselves. And I know it's a process mm -hmm. and it's not a simple thing, but everyone should know that she worth a lot. She is unique, a unique voice in the planet and no one else has her voice. No one else. Mm -hmm. I have my voice. You have your voice. Every woman, every each and every woman doesn't matter where you're from what your status what you know who you are you have your own unique voice and there's a place for it in the world and i totally yes. agree with you on that so thank you for those words i have a last question for you before uh, we we break Absolutely. we break up and uh just for temporary because i, I want to see you again so uh, <laughs> Absolutely. yes so the question is if you were an animal which one would you be and why <laughs> oh, I'd be a lion. A lion. My last name's lion. Yes. I'd be a lion. Of course. I didn't well, think otherwise, lioness but <laughs> needs the pack, right? The lioness yeah. is the real boss. Exactly. She's the aggressive one that attacks. So I'd be you, a lioness. You know, there's a <laughs> saying, there's a, a sentence says that the lioness doesn't really care about what the street cats are talking about her behind her back. And that's a, like it. so that's for you <laughs> Emily you are awesome thank you so much for the time it's been thank such you a so pleasure much having you here and I look forward to speak to you again and and share stages with you and hear you around Absolutely. and I would love that. and thank you so much and everyone thanks for coming to the social lady show you are welcome to come back to us and join to our next episodes And I'll see you then. Thank you so much. Bye.